Hello cousins near and far, and welcome to my channel, Ancestral Spotlight. Today, we're talking about Henry Percy, known best as the second Baron Percy of Olmwick. He was also styled the ninth Baron Percy of Topcliffe, a title that had been in his family for generations. Henry is one of my direct ancestors, and probably many of yours as well, if you're watching. So let's dive in. Henry was the son of Henry Percy, the first Baron of Elmwick, and Eleanor Fitzalan, daughter of the 8th Earl of Arundel, Richard Fitzalan. He was likely born at his father's Leaconfield estate in Yorkshire, England, about February 6, 1298. He has an incredible lineage, with direct ancestors from the houses Alaramisi, Savoy, Burgundy, and Capet, the Fitzalan Earls of Arundel, Mortimer, Browse, Marshall, Clare, Beaumont, Bruce, Warren, and Plantagenet. The list goes on. So if you happen to find Henry in your ancestry, he will definitely connect you to highborn ancestors with vibrant stories from the history books, from ancient Scotland and Scandinavia to the shores of the Mediterranean Sea. Many of his lands fell near the border of England and Scotland. He was among the peerage of England, but like many others, had both English and Scottish blood. He was close kin to the royals of both countries. His third great-grandfather was Adam de Bruce, the second Baron von Skelton, thus making him a fifth cousin, one time removed from Robert the Bruce, whom he would later meet and deal with directly. Henry was 16 in October of 1314, when his father died unexpectedly. As a result of his minority, Sir John Felton, the second Baron Felton, was appointed Regent of the Barony on November 26th, just one month later. Two years would pass before he was granted parts of the land which had belonged to Patrick Dunbar IV, Earl of March, in Northumberland, by King Edward II of England. And it would be another four years, until his regency of Alnwick ended and Sir John Felton delivered the castle and manor of Alnwick back to Henry on November 13, 1318. The Dispenser War took place from 1321 to 1322, and in short summary, King Edward II of England busied himself playing favorites to two Dispenser nobles, Hugh Dispenser the Elder and his son, Hugh the Younger, giving them lands and titles which others felt they were undeserving of. It was a time when the Marcher Lords held great power in the political structure, and thus made these two particular lords extremely powerful. Edward II's son was still in his minority. His wife, Isabella of France, conspired with Roger Mortimer, the third Baron Mortimer, a powerful marcher lord, to remove not only the king himself, but the dispenser lords that were increasing in power and held great sway over their monarch. Henry Percy joined the other barons to back the removal of the dispensers. At the end of the plot, both Hugh the Elder and Younger had been executed, and Edward II had been deposed and killed. Queen Isabella and Lord Mortimer sat as regents for the young King Edward III. At the close of the Dispenser War, Henry found himself made governor of Pickering Castle, along with the town and castle of Scarborough. Not long after, he was knighted at York for his services rendered to the crown. Edward III gathered a small group of trusted men, along with his close companion, William Montague, the first Earl of Salisbury, to aid him in regaining power from his overbearing regents. The king appointed Henry to his council in 1327 and bestowed upon him the castle and manor of Skipton. The following year, Henry, likely echoing his father's skill in negotiations, along with William Zouch, who served as royal chaplain and much later became the Lord Treasurer of England and the Archbishop of York, were tasked to negotiate the Treaty of Edinburgh and Northampton, which was signed in 1328. The treaty brought an end to the First Scottish War of Independence, which had been ongoing since 1296, before Henry himself was born. The treaty was widely unpopular among the English nobles, many of whom thought the terms were humiliating, and the peace was only kept for five years. It was this same year 
1328, that Henry was granted the castle and barony of Workworth. Edward III's regency was ended in 1330 when he managed to oust Mortimer and his mother, the Queen, from power. He had had Mortimer hanged in November of that year. His mother, sometimes called the She-Wolf of France, went unpunished but did not reside in her son's court. On January 13, 1338, Henry stood alongside fellow English Baron William Montague, leader of the English troops at Dunbar Castle, as they laid siege. Despite having a superior force of 20,000 men, the siege ended six months later on June 10th as a failure. The brave Scotswoman, Agnes Randolph, Countess of Dunbar, wife of Patrick Dunbar, the 9th Earl of Dunbar and March, and the daughter of Thomas Randolph, the late Earl of Moray, who had been the nephew and companion in arms of Robert the Bruce, kept and defended her castle home. During the Second War of Scottish Independence in 1333, the English, with King Edward III, who was not happy with the peace treaty made in his name, as well as the Scots, loyal to Edward Balliol, pretender to the Scottish throne and son of John Balliol, who had briefly been King of Scots, laid siege to the town of Berwick-upon-Tweed, which lasted four months. On July 19, 1333, the Scots attacked the English army on Halidon Hill. Edward III personally commanded his men. Sir Archibald Douglas, the guardian of Scotland, led the defense of Berwick-upon-Tweed and was one of thousands of Scots massacred on the marshy battlefield. Only 14 of Edward's men were killed. When the town surrendered the following day, the English king ordered Henry Percy to be the new constable. Henry was the first cousin one time removed on his mother's side of Edward Balliol the Pretender. At age 48, Henry Percy, now a seasoned military veteran, took up arms once more against Scotland on October 17, 1346, at the Battle of Neville's Cross. It was a battle among a small series of which broke the truce between England and Scotland with Scotland, led by King David II, aligned with King Philip IV of France, who was deeply entrenched in the Hundred Years' War with England. William Zelch, now Archbishop of York and serving as the Lord Warden of the Marches, quickly mobilized troops in response to the invading Scots. Lord Ralph Neville, the second Baron Neville of Robbie, joined him and took command of the English troops, numbering between six and 7,000. Henry Percy commanded the first battle, Lord Ralph Neville commanded the second, and Lord William Zouch the third. Although the Scots were doubled in number, the Battle of Neville's Cross was an English victory. Thousands of Scottish warriors perished, and over 50 of their lords and leaders, including King David, were captured and killed, with the exception of those who could pay a ransom. Losses to the English were slight. Henry passed away at the age of 54, likely at his family estate, Workworth Castle, in Northumberland, England, on February 26, 1352. He was interred at Elnwick Abbey with his kin. A few fun facts for you to end on a positive note. The Queen of England recently visited Elnwick Castle. Additionally, the castle served as a filming location for scenes of Downton Abbey and Hogwarts grounds in Harry Potter. So the next time you're watching, Imagine Henry Percy, the second Baron Percy, walking in the background.